50 children uh, were diagnosed with autism. Today, that's one in every 68, or one in every 42 boys. In Massachusetts alone, approximately 75,000 individuals are diagnosed with ASD. Average medical cost of a child with ASD may be as much as six times of that of a child that does not have it. The average cost of education can be as much as 10 times the amount of a student who does not have ASD. So tonight, landmarks all around the world are shining blue lights to raise awareness on their properties, on their monuments, on their tall buildings, the Empire State Building, the buildings in Dubai, all around the world to celebrate, uh, to not only raise awareness, but also to celebrate people with autism. And all the folks, like everybody here, family members, siblings, parents, employees, staff at Hillcrest Center, uh, deserve every bit as much celebration and appreciation as all the individuals that they help. <laughs> Hillcrest is certainly proud to play a small part in this campaign. And we have to extend our sincere appreciation to Mayor Bianchi, the city of Pittsfield, for supporting us and helping us arrange these blue lights uh, for Park Square. Um, in the course of April, thousands of cars are going to go around, and most of them are going to say, I wonder what those blue lights are for. And hopefully they ask, hopefully they become aware, and we know that with information and awareness comes support. And, and support for families, support support for institutions, and ultimately support for anybody that might be impacted. You're, you're, you're gonna say something really quick, but, be, but before that, we have to hear from somebody who understands and appreciates what I'm talking about much, much more than me. So I'd like to introduce you to Samantha, who's a parent of a student, Gus, at one of our programs, and she's gonna say a few things. Shortly, it's about three minutes and 30 seconds because I know it's hard to do this. Okay, so I'm Samantha, this is Gus, and he goes to Housatonic. Yes, Sarah and uh, Maddie are here too. Uh, you are going to see the statements this month that there are one in 68 children that have been identified with the autism spectrum disorders, and it comes out from the centers of disease control. Um, and this can get, you know, some people that don't understand upset. But it's not a disease, it's not contagious, it doesn't need a cure. Um, it's a developmental disability, the brain develops differently, and autistic is a neurotype. It's the way the brain is developed. It's so complex that it becomes a diverse spectrum. And be aware that families are not suffering because their family member is autistic. If anything, we suffer because there are a lack of resources and a lack of understanding. We need to focus more on support and acceptance of the neurodiversity. At first, I asked Gus what he wanted people to know about autism awareness. He told me he wants people to be aware of where he lives so that they can find him when they come to visit. He's autistic and wants an awareness of his physical self, very black and white. And I couldn't go much further with our address, so I wanted to speak a little about triggers and stimming at this time of Easter. Don't ever take anything for granted or assume. Things that some of us think are, think are silly or benign can produce intense reactions in someone that's autistic. Personally, my Gus hates Humpty Dumpty. That's why he's got his little things on. He was in sixth grade public school and was given something to write about. He <clears throat> went what they thought was totally ballistic and berserk because he didn't want to write. Part of this was true, but not all of it. I asked what the subject was, and they told me he had to first read about an egg. Not an egg. <laughs> I dropped my head. There is no behavior that Gus has that isn't started with a trigger, or without a trigger. And I wouldn't have thought to tell the school at sixth grade, no eggs, no egg dying, no egg books, no writing about eggs, and absolutely no mention of Humpty Dumpty. Gus has a severe aversion to Humpty Dumpty because it's abstract, and, he, and the Humpty Dumpty gets hurt. He can't dye Easter eggs because they become beautiful to him and he thinks it's an egg friend and he knows the egg friend is going to have to be thrown away. If we hollow out the eggs, they are too fragile and crack. Right back to Humpty Dumpty. So no dying Easter eggs for Gus at this time of year. 
If a child is having significant behavioral difficulties, including aggression, and trying to injure themselves or others, start looking for triggers. You can try different diets, meds, etc., but try looking inside or around the person. Look at all of the senses. Do they have an earache, a stomach ache, and can't express it? Has there been an unusual noise or movement with something said? You'd be surprised. One of the most obvious responses to these triggers is called stimming, the jumping and the hand flapping. <clears throat> this is a need to get rid of stress and to feel safe. Don't stop people when they do this. Don't try to teach them something or make a point in these moments. It's their natural method of expression. Not an embarrassment, it's a unique and beautiful dance. Imagine how much better we might all feel if this was an expected practice. We need more schools like Housatonic Academy. Gus has hated school since preschool. It has taken going to Housatonic to turn this around. It's not at 100%, but he has actually stated, I love school, I found where I belong. Not every autistic person has Gus's level of ability. Not everyone is verbal or reactive, and that's okay. Hillcrest offers other environments to be in at Housatonic or at the Residential Autism Spectrum Program for people to be safe and successful. And for all of the <laughs> Housatonics here that know my jokester, what does a laughing deer use for money? Ha bucks. <laughs> the Autism Society states, let's create a world where all people, regardless of diagnosis, are treated with respect and dignity and are appreciated for who they are. So in closing, for all of our autistic friends, be different, accept your neurodiversity, be patient, don't silence, don't normalize, don't vary from your special interests, stim with determination, and above all, love, love, love your individuality. Thank you. see why we're all here trying to raise awareness and why this initiative, this, this campaign is just so important because we really need to do what we can uh, to support families like this and Samantha and Gus to make sure they get the resources they need so that they can be themselves and do everything Samantha just said they want to be able to do. So, the lights are on sensors. This is tricky. <laughs> Gus, Gus fully intends on doing a countdown. And because the lights are on sensor, well, I'm going to ask everybody to turn off their bracelet. And then Mr. Gus is going to count down from, I believe, five. And when he gets to one, or zero, when he gives us the command, we'll recognize these lights around us. We'll also turn on our bracelets and, and we, we can celebrate the whole moment. You ready, Gus? Five, four, three, two, one, go! All right. Once again, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Mayor Bianchi, thank you again so much for taking it. Do you want, do you want to say a couple words? No, all I'd like to say is that only though there was only three and a half, four minutes, I learned more. It was, it was the most uh, knowledge uh, giving three or half or four minutes, I guess. I mean, two or three years ago, I knew nothing about autism. It was just a word, and I you know, had to run to the dictionary to, to look it up. But it's such an incredible thing. And when you hear the statistics, you realize we got to wake up the people in Boston, and we got to wake up the people in Washington. Really important uh, to put resources where they really deserve to be put. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thanks for the city. Thank you all for doing what you're doing.